Hello and welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the easiest way I found to make biochar. So what is biochar anyway? Well, it's essentially charcoal. Now, this is all natural charcoal made of wood pieces, branches, anything that wasn't chemically treated. This isn't the same as like charcoal briquettes that you would use to barbecue. Just straight up natural wood. And biochar is when we take the charcoal and we load it up with nutrients. So charcoal is very absorbent and it's used in many different ways, even internally. You can get charcoal caplets, which can help you with an upset stomach. You've seen charcoal toothpaste and soaps. It's got a lot of different uses and you can actually use this charcoal on the farm, on the homestead, as it is, as a deodorizer. If you want to add some of this into your animal pen to help keep smells down and absorb some of the moisture that's in there, you might still want to break this down a little bit further. And let me show you how easy this stuff just crumbles. So you can really grind this down to a powder. I like to use a big tamper, like you do to tamp down soil, and crush this down into a powder. But even smaller chunks like this are gonna work well absorbing and uptaking some of those smells and nutrients that are being deposited by your animals. But then they become loaded with nutrients that you can then transfer to other parts of the garden to help to feed your plants. So I've made several videos about making biochar at home. And if you're familiar on the topic, then you've probably seen some pretty fancy setups, different rigs that people set up to make biochar at home, whether it's a 55 gallon drum, steel drum container, or it's digging a hole, which I've shared with you in the past, building up a mound and covering it with clay. There's all sorts of different techniques. After many, many years of making biochar, I've come to a conclusion that the absolute easiest way to do it is to simply have yourself something similar to a little campfire. You're gonna to wanna to put safety first, of course, check with your local codes before doing this. Also have a hose nearby, but you could even do this when you're camping at the fire pit. Put yourself in some natural wood product. It can be mixed, all different sizes is actually preferable. You have smaller stuff, little twigs. You have larger branches and stumps and maybe other pieces of wood as well. And you build that up, you get a nice healthy fire going and you can continue to add to it whatever you've got that you're burning. If you're doing a burn pile, if you're out in the country, very common to have a big burn pile. Well, you just keep adding to it or you just get that whole pile going. And once the flame dies down and the pile begins to smolder, you just hit it with the hose and you completely drench the entire fire down. And at that point, what ends up happening is you're gonna have all of this wood preserved as charcoal rather than actually burning all the way down to ash. Now you may be left with a few pieces of wood like this didn't fully burn down, that's okay. We can add that into the next fire pit. But 90% of what remains is the charcoal that you can now easily load up and create nutrient-dense biochar for the garden. So what's the greatest benefit to adding in this biochar into the garden? Well, it takes many years to fully break down, and as it's doing so, it's gonna release the nutrients that we load into it. So it's a slow-release fertilizer. It also is a great home to harbor microorganisms that are like the little construction workers for your garden. It's gonna to help to build your soil tilth, create a nice draining soil, a nice dark, rich, organic soil that your plants are gonna thrive in. All right, so how do we go about loading up the biochar? Well, like I had mentioned, you can pound this stuff down with a tamper is what I recommend. There's different ways of doing it, but you can crush this stuff down and turn it into a powder if you want, or you can leave it in its chunk form and even chunks like this, they're gonna uptake all these nutrients. And when you scatter this into the garden, they're gonna break down as you walk on your pathways or wherever you're putting this in. They're gonna break down over time. So it's really up to you how much time and effort you wanna put into it. But once you've got your charcoal here, all you need to do is add in whatever nutrient source that you have available. I recommend trying to stick to something on the free side if you can and make this whole process free. Now the loading of the charcoal turning it into biochar is going to be done over about a month long period. It's primarily going to be done by adding in liquid nutrients. It can be anything from urine to fish pond water. You can make your own concoction, something like liquid kelp with some fish emulsion. Or you can just add this stuff right into a decomposing compost heap that you're constantly adding different materials into and nutrients. And it's going to load up that way as well. So after about a month's time, this stuff's going to be completely loaded and ready to go into the garden. Now, what would be to happen if you were to throw this right into the garden as is without loading it? Well, it's highly absorbent. 
and it's going to actually take up and tie up nutrients. That's why we're loading it up with nutrients because it's going to absorb it so well. But if you were to scatter this into the garden before preloading, then it's actually going to tie up and take nutrients out of your soil. It's a tie up if you just throw it into your garden as is. So what I like to do is get a storage container like this one here. And we add in the char. And at this point, like I said, if you want to crush it down with a tamper, it'll all be contained in here. It can get a bit dusty, so you might want to water it down a little bit before you do that. But just a few minutes of tampering, you can really turn this into a powder. You can see we've got a lot of really broken down char already. And some of this smaller stuff, I'm just going to leave it be. Now you can just add in your nutrient of choice. And we're going to give that a good stir. And you can flood this a little bit more than what we just added in. Or you can leave it like this, come back, add a bit more nutrients over the course of a few days, and just keep on giving it a stir. And you may want to put a lid on this as well. If you do, allow for a little bit of airflow. So either a screen material or just a loose fitting lid will work. And that's going to help just to keep any bugs out of here. And that's it, my friends. That's how easy it is to make biochar. So if you've heard of this wonderful garden amendment before, maybe you've seen just how expensive it could be if you're trying to purchase it pre-made. Well, I just share with you a very easy and quick way that I go about doing it. Out of all the different ways that I share with you how to go about making biochar, this is by far the easiest, quickest, most efficient, and it's completely free. So this is probably the way I'm gonna to continue to do it from now on moving forward. May experiment with some other different techniques as well, but just thought it would be helpful for me to share this with you today. So with that, I wanna wish you all a great rest of your night. Until next time, this is Dan from plantabundance.com. Take care, I'll be talking to you again soon. And check it out guys. Some of the buds here are beginning to open up on the Fajoa tree, the pineapple guava. If you've never eaten a pineapple guava, they're delicious. And if you've never eaten the petals of a pineapple guava flower, you're missing out, it's like candy. So good.